There's a couple things uh, related to the Steelers wide receiver position that we'll discuss to start off the show, and then we'll close it out by talking about whether or not Mike Tomlin sabotaged Kendrick Green and Kevin Dotson. Yeah, that's where we're at right now. That's where we're at. It's a uh, desert out here for content or actual, like, real news with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Like, yeah, we're, we're at this point. Usually, you get there around, like, June, July, where it's, like, a desert. But right now, we're in this purgatory of how free agency started with the Steelers with all the splash moves and everything. And we got two weeks until the draft. We're just sitting in, in this no man's land where we're talking about former Steelers and Kevin Dotson and Kendrick Green. And, you know, whenever I mentioned briefly the wide receiver position in this intro, it's not like we're talking about George Pickens or Deontay Johnson or Calvin Austin. No, it's uh, Miles Boykin. Former Steeler receiver Miles Boykin will not be returning to the team. He was on the squad for these last two years. But if you don't recognize the name that much, I don't blame you because he really didn't do much for us from the offensive standpoint, from an offensive standpoint. Uh, special teams, he is arguably one of the best gunners in the league. And what is a gunner? The gunner is, I'm not talking about Gunnar Olszewski, the gunner is like for punts, you got the outside guys who are chasing down the punts, trying to cause chaos and make tackles. Him and James Pierre were our starting gunners for, I know at least last year, I guess even the year prior. So we're going to have to replace that. From a straight receiver standpoint, Boykin didn't do much. And it, I, I don't know if it's completely his fault. We have some good guys that were in front of us. At least he did his job providing depth for us and providing some decent blocking when called upon because, you know... Uh, Deontay and Pickens didn't do the best at that. So there were times last year where I'd be yelling at the TV and questioning, like, why isn't Pickens and Deontay out there? Why the hell is Boykin and Allen Robinson out on the field? We're making our offense so predictable. It was at least because Miles Boykin and Allen Robinson were pretty decent run blockers and willing participants in that category. So it's not something to completely take for granted, but you want your receiver making impact more through catching the ball and through the air as opposed to blocking. Again, something you shouldn't be just overlooking completely because because there were times last year with Deontay Johnson and George Pickens where if they just would have finished their block, if they would have given more effort with their block, we would have been better on offense because of it. Uh, so yeah, I think the thing with Boykin is just how are we going to replace him with special teams, him and Pierre, because we're going to have two open gunner spots right now. And if you're a Quez Watkins, if you're Denzel Mims, Van Jefferson, Marquez Callaway, all these upside receivers that are like going to be buying for the wide receiver four, wide receiver five spot, if you want an inside track, work on your special teams. Try to get a skill set being a gunner. And even with uh, some of the corners that are out there, like Corey Trice, Darius Rush, maybe even one of these corners that we potentially draft this year, if you want a better chance to make the team, work on your special teams, and in this case, particularly Gunner. So that's really all we're missing out on with Miles Boykin. He's getting up there in age a little bit. He's like, what, 27, 28? He just, yeah, he really hasn't done much in the league period because he spent some time in Baltimore before coming to the Steelers. And you look at his overall stats, it just, it isn't there. But I think he's found his niche in the league right now of being a special teams gunner and just wide receiver depth. So if he can continue to make a career out of it, great for him. Uh, wish him nothing but the best except for when he's playing the Pittsburgh Steelers. But in relation to receiver, right now we got Pickens. No more Miles Boykin. But after Pickens, there's a drop-off, I think, of people that we can really trust because it's – Calvin Austin, and those four other receivers I just mentioned. Watkins, Marquez Callaway, Denzel Mims. Uh, who am I missing? Van Jefferson. How much are you really trusting any of those dudes as your wide receiver too? Like, I think we can get by with a Van Jefferson, but I don't want to just get by if we can still make an upgrade. And we definitely can still make an upgrade, whether it's through the draft, free agency, or an NFL insider just brought up this scenario, uh, a trade. 
a trade could still be out there for the Steelers. We had the Brandon Ayuk rumors popping off like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Nothing came of that. And then we just moved on with our lives and assumed that, okay, if we don't trade for Ayuk, a trade's probably not going to happen. We're going to draft a dude in the second round, maybe even first round, and that's going to be our wide receiver too, and that's how we're going to round up this receiver room. Or maybe we sign a Tyler Boyd, but I still think we would have to draft the receiver even with the Tyler Boyd signing or like an Odell Beckham sign and something like that. But this trade scenario has been brought back up. Reporter's name is Jason LaCanfora, and he said on the In the Huddle podcast that the Steelers are still pursuing a trade for a wide receiver. He says, for me, there's a piece of information we don't have yet, which is, do they trade for a wide receiver before the draft? It would not surprise me if they did that tomorrow, if they did it the Wednesday before the draft, or if they did it while they were on the clock. If they did it in the run-up to the draft that Thursday, I know they're really trying to make something happen here. Okay, then. Like I said, wasn't really expecting this to be the case, but as we said how many times with Omar Khan, expect the unexpected. And I'm not against it at all. The price just has to be right. When I first heard of the Brandon Ayuk trade rumors, I think I jumped the gun and said I was cool with us giving up a first-round pick and Calvin Austin and paying him 25-plus million. I think that was a knee-jerk reaction. Right now, a second-round pick seems very fair, and paying him like $21 million seems fair to me. But is that what Ayuk's ultimately looking for? I don't know. So that's why it could be a question whether or not coming to the Steelers would be the right fit for him because he's probably looking for more money, 25, 26 million. And his production would dictate that, especially last year. Like he's a really good receiver, but I have my concerns. Like he wants this wide receiver one franchise money, but I don't know if he is that he's had a really good system around him with Kyle Shanahan. He's had a Christian McCaffrey there, a Debo Samuel, George Kittle to open some things up for him. I don't know if you're a team trading for Ayuk if you should have the expectations of him being like an A.J. Brown or like a Jamar Chase or Justin Jefferson, like that type of player. I could be wrong, but with the Steelers already having pickings, I don't think you can afford to be paying another receiver franchise type of money like that, 25 plus million. 21 million makes sense. That's around what Deontay Johnson was getting, just a little bit more. But what is Brandon Ayuk? an upgrade over Deontay Johnson. So I think that would be the perfect sweet spot for the Steelers. I I don't feel great about paying Ayuk more than 25, 26 mil, especially if you're giving up an asset. A second round pick, I'd be cool with. First round pick, not so much. So it's got to be, I think, for a receiver trade to work for the Steelers, this perfect sweet spot. Ayuk, like on paper, I think he's a perfect fit for the Steelers. Great compliment to Pickens, a better version of Deontay Johnson, Blocks really well, more physical than a Deontay. I, I think it's I think it's awesome. I think it'd be a great fit, especially if you're the Steelers and looking to go all in this season. You can afford someone like like Ayuk. But how long is the contract? That's something else you gotta consider because you're gonna have to start paying some of these young offensive weapons like a Pat Fryermuth, George Pickens, Najee Harris, uh Broderick Jones. Even Russell Wilson or Justin Fields, like depending on how this season goes, like you're gonna have to start paying some money to a quarterback. So how long is Brandon Ayuk's deal? Like these are all questions that have to be had. But if the Steelers want to trade for a receiver, they just don't want to look in the draft and they want a top ten, top fifteen type of guy, Ayuk is a name. Other guys that you could throw out there are T. Higgins, Cortland Sutton, probably not gonna cost as much to get a Sutton, but for a wide receiver, too, a guy that has familiarity with a Russell Wilson, a former pro bowler, that one could make sense. Like, I could live with a Cortland Sutton being wide receiver, two for us. I could live with that. Then we don't have to draft the receiver in the first two rounds. Jalen Waddell, Devonta Smith, they got some contract extensions coming up. How much are the Dolphins or the Eagles willing to pay those guys? So this could be one of those scenarios where they're expendable. They're on the trade block. I don't know how imminent either of those guys are to being traded or just trade shocks in general with those guys. Uh, But those are a couple other names that are being brought up as
potential just trade targets to wide receiver needy teams out there. But of this list, if money wasn't an issue at all or assets given up wasn't an issue, I think Brandon Ayuk is the best fit. But the best value may be Cortland Sutton. If all we have to give up is like a late round pick, I don't know what his contract is right now. I don't have that off the top of my head. But I'm sure there's some finagling. There's some workarounds that can be done if you're Omar Khan and the Steelers with his deal. Uh, but yeah, uh, again, not opposed to a deal being had. I just think it has to make sense for the Steelers. And Omar Khan up to this point hasn't put us in a bad scenario. So if it is for Brandon Ayuk, I'm assuming it's going to be something Steeler friendly that, that it makes sense. It is a second round pick or a third round pick. And we're only paying Ayuk like 21, 22 million max. But if we can't get an agreement done there and it's like a court and sudden, then obviously it's like, okay, this was the best deal for us. This was the one that made most sense for the Steelers. Something to keep an eye out for. Uh, this was a report, again, wasn't really expecting to see. I just thought, you know, we'd make a Tyler Boyd signing potentially, or we're just going to go into the draft with the mindset of, hey, we got to draft a guy first, second, or third round at the receiver spot. But moving on, let's get to this offensive line talk as promised. And the reason we're talking about Kevin Dotson and Kendrick Green potentially being sabotaged by Mike Tallman and the Steelers is because their personal offensive line coach, Duke Mannyweather, he coaches both of them in the offseason. He went on the Chipped Ham and Football podcast hosted by Brian Batko. And I guess the topic was brought up and he explained why he thinks it didn't work out here for both of them in Pittsburgh. It's, it's very simple. Um, and I respect Coach Tomlin and I respect Pat Meyer. Um, got a great relationship with both of them. Um, and I've I've been very frank with them about, about this, is that Kendrick Green should have been playing left guard from the start, like he is down in Houston, and Kevin Dotson should have been playing right guard from the start. Um, there's this conversation that always goes on about, oh, well, Guys got to be able to play both sides. It's bullshit. If you're drafting a guy, um, and I understand getting your best five, but if you're drafting a guy and you have the opportunity to play him at his college position that he's had success at, play him at that position. Kevin Dotson had, you know, 50 something starts for Louisiana Lafayette at right guard. You know, left guard was never uh, comfortable for him. It was never, um, you know, really where he, he, he felt that. He can do some of the things that he was doing. Um, and I think he played some games at right guard in Pittsburgh his first year, and he thrived. He looked very promising there. So I was always a proponent of having KD um, at right guard and having KG at left guard. So I agree with the Kevin Dotson side of this because Dotson was legitimately – a good player for us. Like he was a solid starter. Could he have been better? Sure. Did he have a bad moment here or there? Sure. Were there some unfavorable reports out there on him and his work ethic and potentially being in Mike Tomlin's doghouse? Yeah. Yeah, that was there too. But when he was on the field, he was legitimately a good player for us. So I can only imagine if we were to have put him in his right position over at right guard. He literally played, I think outside of like a game or two, all of his starts, all, all of his minutes, all of his snaps were at left guard. His position is right guard. Like he said that he came on the podcast back in his rookie year and said like, yes, I prefer the right guard spot. And when you look at just the little time that he had at right guard versus his time at left guard, like, yes, right guard is his natural position. The problem with how everything played out, though, is the only reason he got that spot starter to at right guard is because David DeCastro was hurt in Dotson's rookie year. So if you're going to play Kevin Dotson, you're not going to be taking out David DeCastro, the Hall of Famer. No, you're going to put Dotson over at left guard. And then the following year, maybe this would have been the Steelers' best opportunity to put Dotson back to his natural position because I think we didn't really have anyone for most of the offseason at right guard. I think there were talks about DeCastro, whether or not he was going to come back or not. He ultimately retired. No, we cut DeCastro. We cut DeCastro, and I think we just still stuck with Kevin Dotson at left guard, even though there was an opening. 
We ultimately signed Trey Turner, put him at right guard. But that could have been the chance for the Steelers to put Dawson at right guard and see what he was capable of. Uh, but then the next offseason, we signed a James Daniel. We put him at right guard. Kevin Dawson stays at left guard. So, yeah, I think uh, Steelers missed out on an opportunity to put Dawson at his natural position. Now, after his first three years there, was there legitimate reason to look for an Isaac Salem Alou? and try to upgrade the position. Yeah, I get it, but I also think we could have went into 2023 with Dotson being our starting left guard. But that obviously, seeing how he did with the Rams this last season, it would have been a disservice to him. So yeah, I do think the Steelers missed out on Kevin Dotson's full potential. There was maybe a little bit of a sabotage element going on there, but then you do have those reports, as I mentioned, about Tomlin not really seeing eye to eye with Dotson and how Dotson handled his work, I guess. So it's not surprising with how everything played out, but it is unfortunate. I don't think we completely did right by Dotson. Now, Kendrick Green, I get the argument because even Big Ben said that Kendrick Green should have never been playing center. Like I, he said, I think his position is guard. Meanwhile, for whatever reason, uh, this is where you can question what the, what the hell the Steelers were doing with their offensive line evaluations and just how they were constructing this roster for Ben's final season. Hashtag the sabotage. If you know, you know. Like We had him out there as the starting center for his rookie year, even though you got people that know football like a Big Ben, other people, Duke Mannyweather brings it up right now, uh, Kendrick Green's more fit for guard, so why the hell are we putting him at center? Now, we needed a center. Pouncey retired. But, uh, yeah, I guess you could say we didn't completely do right by Green in doing that. But I just don't know if he's that good of a player either uh, because we also have tried him out at guard and in some of those preseason games where he's been playing guard, it doesn't look good. Uh, yeah, we even got to the point where we had to try him out at fullback. So, like, yeah, I think the argument's more justified uh, with Kevin Dotson and a sabotage taking place as opposed to Green. Now, I will admit, maybe we didn't set up Green for the best of success, but I just don't think he's flat out as good as Kevin Dotson. Now, we'll see how it, the rest of his career plays out with the Texans and whatnot. But as of right now, yeah, I think the I think the case for Kevin Dotson being sabotage is much more valid than Kendrick Green. But that's it for today's show. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments on Miles Boykin leaving. If a receiver trade is on the horizon, who would you want to pick up of some of the names mentioned? And maybe there is a name out there that I didn't mention. That's on the trade block. And then any thoughts on Kevin Dotson, Kendrick Green being sabotaged here. But stay chilling. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace.